An important part of today's armed forces capability is what's known as loitering munition, or more popularly, the suicide or kamikaze drone. They were originally developed as a defence against surface-to-air missiles, but now have various roles to meet today's threats. And basically, the munition can loiter around a target area for some time, can search for targets and can attack once a target is located. They enable faster reaction times against concealed or hidden targets that emerge for short periods without placing high value platforms close to the target area. And they also allow more selective targeting as the actual attack mission can be aborted and the drone can return to base. So you could say that they fall somewhere between a cruise missile and, it, and an expensive unmanned combat aerial vehicle or UCAV and share characteristics with both. At last month's IDEX show, EDGE, the UAE's prime contractor, now in its second year, and one of the top 25 defence companies in the world, unveiled an entire family of smart loitering drones. We met up with Miles Chambers, Director of Business Development at EDGE, and asked him to introduce us to the family. So uh, here you're looking at a family of uh, new loitering munitions produced by Adasi. Uh, which is part of the EDGE group under the Platforms and Systems cluster. And we have a family of uh, four new uh, drones, um, the QX family, uh, QX1 through to 4, um, and basically being in different sizes uh, and categories in terms of uh, payload, in terms of endurance. And I think what we've seen in the market space over the years is uh, developments in these kamikaze drones um, with the idea that these are munitions that can loiter over the battle space. When they detect a target, you can deploy these diving the, the drone onto the target, which of course means that the drone uh, is destroyed in the process. Um, the concept behind these, uh, excluding the micro, um, is that these drones are reusable, carrying a payload um, to the area of operation, being able to loiter over, deploying a payload, and then being able to return to base um, to be re uh, reloaded and, and reused. So obviously greatly reducing the cost of ownership. The QX1 uh, is intended really for uh, frontline operations, special forces, uh, you know, typically if you're in an environment perhaps where you're bedded down by sniper fire and you need to be able to deploy something to take out um, a combatant, uh, the micro drone is man portable um, with an integrated uh, payload of around uh, half a kilogram. Uh, this can fly up to a, a ceiling altitude of 2,000 feet, um, which again, you know, in this size, at that altitude, uh, it, it's, jet, its noise signature is uh, almost inaudible um, at ground level. It can loiter over the, the battle space, and then once a target is selected, be able to go into a dive um, using the angular motion of the rotor blades uh, as it guides down to the target, which greatly reduces uh, the noise signature. So really being able to precisely target what you need to, to take out and then being able to uh, do that relatively uh, quietly. A big issue for troops on the ground is the whole situational awareness. And of course, the bad guys don't stop at night. So how does the QX family deal with the visual challenges? In all of the payloads have got an integrated uh, IR, uh, EOIR camera um, that gives you day-night operation. Thermal uh, is also optional. Um, and we've integrated an AI uh, computer onto these platforms that allows us to uh, you know, receive the video image from the camera and the AI computer being able to do that tracking. So we can do that tracking on the optical image, which means that we can operate these even in uh, uh, GPS-denied environments. The QX family with both vertical takeoff and fixed wing has really captured the latest in artificial intelligence. The precision guided systems use sophisticated AI algorithms to target and strike and boast an accuracy of just one meter CEP, that stands for circular error probable. But that gives them an aim similar to more costly laser guided munitions. The family is built to launch in any environment or terrain. I asked Miles to explain the difference between the various family members. The idea is that as we go up in scale and size, we can carry more payload. Um, but obviously also we've got a longer endurance 
being able to go out to 20 and then 40 kilometers uh, with a longer endurance time. Again, being able to go out uh, to 20 minutes and then up to 40 minutes, uh, loitering over the, uh, the battle space for a longer period of time. And of course, being able to take uh, different types of uh, warhead payloads, depending on what the threat environment is. So being able to go up to one and a half kilogram payload on the uh, Mini, the QX2, uh, up to six kilograms payload on the QX3 and the QX4. Edge released a series of animations to show customers just how the QX operates and destroys different types of target. When we're looking at a one and a half kilogram payload, uh, you know, that in itself is not a, um, a large uh, warhead. Um, perhaps this is taking out soft ta targets, um, some uh, semi-fortified uh, um, targets uh, in uh, buildings or in operational areas, uh, going up to the six kilograms. So on, on the QX3 and the QX4, we have options in terms of that payload. So we can carry four one and a half kilogram payloads, giving you multiple uh, target engagement opportunities, or two two and a half kilogram or one five to six kilogram warhead. So on a five to six kilogram warhead, yes, you could absolutely disturb uh, something in an armored vehicle uh, category. The two larger family members with their six kilogram warheads are very different from each other, with the QX4 being in a fixed wing configuration rather than the VTOL of the QX3. So in the QX3 and the QX4, typically, you know, being larger, not man portable, so it would be deployed from uh, a longer range. Um, uh, the, the, the fixed wing VTOL, as we call it, the QX4, um, you know, being in a fixed wing configuration gives us a, a, longer, uh, a longer endurance capability. So uh, typically the same range, because that's uh, control, you know, limited really by your d uh, data link, um, but being able to have a longer endurance up to 90 minutes. So giving you more loiter time over, over the environment. We have seen in the civil sector many aircraft struggling with the hot and harsh environments there in the Middle East and other regions in Asia and Africa. So as those hot, sandy desert winds come roaring in, how does the QX family manage to operate and particularly stay on target? Yeah, so all of the, the QX family have been designed to be able to withstand up to 40 kilometer wind speeds um, as well as gusts. So those were fundamental as you, uh, you know, within the UAE environment and, you know, the, the broader MENA region, this is something that's quite typical. Um, so, we, you know, we do that by, you know, very high speed, um, uh, the rotor engines being able to operate very high speed, which gives it a very stable flight path and being able to hand those uh, environmental conditions. Edge has now tested and proven the QX family can meet the requirements for the munitions and is now ready to go the next stage and begin marketing those capabilities to the world, an opportunity that excites Miles. So how will Edge go about it? I mean, great question. And, uh, you know, the UAE industry itself has grown substantially over the last 30 years. Um, I think, you know, today uh, Edge is now recognized in the top 25 largest defense companies globally. And I think for an industry to have grown so rapidly. So, you know, the consolidation under Edge is, I think, a very logical cons consolidation. And we've seen this around the world with many other large um, defense and aerospace companies. Um, and, you know, absolutely key is as we've built up in scale and maturity of the, of the industry, so we absolutely look to the international market. And many of the Edge companies today have already had great success. In, uh, in taking their products into the global market and actively being deployed and acquired by a, a number of nations around the world. The built-in warheads and the opportunity to reuse equipment as well as the capability to operate in hot and harsh conditions suggests that this first for the UAE industry could prove a winner for Edge. The Adassi division has built on his experience developing UAVs and UGVs as standalone companies but now, as part of the platform and systems cluster at Edge, it's adding to these next generation unmanned systems for air, land and sea, capable of performance in a diverse range of demanding environments and complying with the tactical demands of the future. It's a name to watch out for.